After all, can you eat it all or not? Have you ever found yourself thinking about how diabetes affects your diet and everyday life? Perhaps you have received a lot of contradictory information, feeling lost among so many rules and restrictions. I know how difficult it is to live with diabetes, always worrying about what you can or cannot eat, and often these worries end up getting in the way of the pleasure of eating. Today, we are going to demystify the nine biggest lies about nutrition for diabetics that are out there, confusing and worrying you. Imagine being able to eat more freely and still keep your sugar levels under control. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? But this dream can come true. There are many wrong ideas circulating that end up increasing the frustration and insecurity of those living with diabetes. In this video, we will clarify each of these lies so that you can make food choices with confidence and security. The truth is that, by debunking these myths, you will be able to eat more pleasantly and without so many worries. What's more, while you watch this video until the end, I'll share five incredible tips on how to control your blood sugar in a completely natural way, without medication. These tips will transform your routine and improve your quality of life. So, if you're tired of following advice that only complicates your diet and want to discover the truth behind the lies about diabetes, you're in the right place. Stay with me until the end of this video to receive these valuable tips that could change your life. But before we continue, hit the like button if you love health content. Lie number nine. Diabetic people cannot eat yogurt. Have you ever heard that diabetics should avoid yogurt? This is one of the most widespread myths, but the truth is that yogurt can be an excellent food for people with diabetes, as long as it is chosen correctly. Let's understand how yogurt can be included in a healthy way in a diabetic's diet. Yogurt is an excellent source of protein, calcium, and probiotics. Proteins help maintain satiety and stabilize blood sugar levels, while calcium is essential for healthy bones and teeth. Probiotics, in turn, promote good intestinal health, which can have positive effects on blood sugar control. The key to including yogurt in your diet is to choose natural yogurts without added sugar or artificial sweeteners. Many yogurts on the market are loaded with sugar, which can quickly raise blood glucose levels. Therefore, it is important to read labels carefully and choose yogurts that only have milk and active cultures as ingredients. Here are some tips on how to consume yogurt in a healthy way. Plain yogurt with fruit. Instead of choosing sweetened yogurts, opt for plain yogurt and add fresh fruit like strawberries, blueberries, or apple slices. Fruits add natural sweetness and fiber, which help control blood sugar levels. This combination is not only delicious, but also rich in nutrients. Yogurt with nuts and seeds. Adding walnuts, almonds, chia, or flaxseed to natural yogurt can increase the amount of protein and fiber in your meal. Nuts and seeds are rich in healthy fats, which help to prolong satiety and stabilize blood glucose. This is an excellent option for a balanced breakfast or snack. Natural yogurt can be the base smoothies with yogurt for nutritious smoothies. Mix a serving of yogurt with spinach, avocado, berries, and a little water or almond milk. This smoothie is not only tasty, but also packed with vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants, making it a great way to start your day. Sauces and dressings. Use plain yogurt as a base for homemade sauces and dressings. You can make a creamy salad dressing by mixing yogurt with fresh herbs, garlic, and a squeeze of lemon. This provides a healthier alternative to industrial sauces, which often contain sugar and additives. In addition to choosing the right type of yogurt, moderation is key. A suitable serving of yogurt is usually about half a cup or 125 grams. Consuming yogurt in appropriate portions helps ensure you are getting the nutritional benefits without eating excess calories or carbohydrates. Another point to consider is the type of milk used in the production of yogurt. Yogurts made with whole milk are higher in fat, while those made with skim milk are lower in calories and fat. Choosing the type that best suits your dietary needs can help balance your macronutrient intake. We will also address the impact of the probiotics present in yogurt. Studies suggest that probiotics can improve insulin sensitivity and help with blood glucose control. This makes yogurt an even more beneficial choice for those with diabetes, as well as contributing to digestive health. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat yogurt is a huge lie. With smart choices, Natural yogurts with no added sugars can be a delicious and nutritious part of the diet. 
enjoy yogurt in its various forms and enjoy its numerous health benefits. Lie number eight, diabetic people cannot eat corn. Corn is a delicious and versatile food present in many culinary traditions around the world. However, there is a common myth that diabetics should avoid corn due to its carbohydrate content. Let's demystify this idea and understand how corn can be included in a healthy way in the diet of those with diabetes. Firstly, corn is an excellent source of nutrients, including fiber, B vitamins, and minerals such as magnesium and iron. Fiber, in particular, plays a crucial role in controlling blood glucose, helping to slow the absorption of carbohydrates and preventing glucose spikes. A medium ear of corn contains about three to four grams of fiber, which contributes to slower digestion and a gradual rise in blood sugar. Another advantage of corn is its moderate glycemic index, especially when compared to other refined carbohydrates. The glycemic index of corn is influenced by its preparation. For example, cooked corn has a lower glycemic index than corn that is canned or processed into products like corn flakes. Therefore, opting for fresh corn and preparing it simply can be a healthy way to include it in your diet. Here are some tips on how to consume corn healthily. Cooked corn. Cooking a fresh ear of corn is a simple and nutritious way to enjoy this food. Avoid adding large amounts of butter or salt. Instead, try seasoning the corn with fresh herbs, a pinch of sea salt, and a drizzle of olive oil to enhance the flavor without adding unnecessary calories. Corn salad. Add cooked corn to salads for a colorful and nutritious meal. Combine corn with fresh vegetables like tomatoes, cucumbers, and avocado, and add a source of protein like black beans or grilled chicken. This creates a balanced and tasty meal, perfect for controlling blood sugar levels. Soups and stews. Corn can be a great ingredient for soups and stews, adding texture and natural sweetness. Try a vegetable soup with corn, carrots, and green beans, or a chicken stew with corn and sweet potatoes. These preparations help distribute carbohydrates throughout the meal, keeping glucose levels more stable. Roasted corn. Roasting corn in the oven or on the barbecue is a tasty and healthy alternative. Just leave the cob hole with the skin on. Roast until the kernels are soft and slightly caramelized, and then season with lemon, pepper, and a little grated Parmesan cheese. When consuming corn, it is important to control portions. A serving of corn is usually half a cup of kernels or a medium ear. Keeping an eye on portion sizes helps ensure you're getting an adequate amount of carbs without going overboard. Another aspect to consider is how often you consume corn. Varying carbohydrate sources throughout the week is essential for a balanced diet. In addition to corn, include other nutrient-rich vegetables, whole grains, and legumes to diversify your diet. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat corn is a huge lie. With smart choices and portion control, corn can be a delicious and nutritious addition to your diet. Enjoy corn in its various forms and enjoy its nutritional benefits without fear. If you like to eat well and have difficulty finding recipes suitable for diabetics, I have prepared a cookbook especially for you who have diabetes. In this book, you will find recipes for savory and sweet dishes, which will help you keep your sugar levels under control. And the most incredible thing is that they are prepared with simple ingredients that you already have at home. Start changing your habits now by making small changes to your plate. The link to this book is in the first comment of this video. Click now and get yours for less than $10. Units at this price are limited, so get yours now. Lie number seven. Diabetic people cannot eat chocolate. One of the most painful myths for chocolate lovers is the idea that diabetics cannot consume this delicious delicacy. Let's clarify this lie and show that, with the right choices, chocolate can be part of a healthy diet for those with diabetes. Traditional milk chocolate and white chocolate are high in sugar and saturated fats, which can actually cause blood glucose spikes and contribute to health problems. However, there is a healthier alternative, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, especially that with 70% or more cocoa, contains less sugar and more antioxidants, which can provide health benefits when consumed in moderation. Cocoa, the main ingredient in dark chocolate, is rich in flavonoids, which are antioxidant compounds known to improve insulin sensitivity, reduce blood pressure, and improve cardiovascular health. These benefits make dark chocolate an interesting option for diabetics, as long as it is consumed in small quantities. 
Let's talk about how to incorporate dark chocolate into your diet in a healthy way. Small portions. The key is moderation. A serving of 20 to 30 grams of dark chocolate per day is enough to get the benefits of flavonoids without overdoing it with calories and sugar. Smart combinations. Combine dark chocolate with foods rich in fiber and protein to avoid glucose spikes. For example, you can melt some dark chocolate and use it as a topping for fruit like strawberries, raspberries, or apple slices. This combination is not only delicious, but also adds fiber and nutrients to your dessert. Healthy snacks. Dark chocolate can be part of healthy snacks. Try mixing small pieces of dark chocolate with nuts and seeds for a crunchy, nutritious snack. Nuts provide healthy fats and protein, helping to keep you full and control blood sugar levels. Homemade recipes. Incorporating dark chocolate into homemade recipes can be a way to satisfy your sweet tooth in a controlled way. You can make a healthy chocolate mousse using avocado, cocoa powder, and some melted dark chocolate. This dessert is rich in healthy fats and antioxidants, as well as being a nutritious and tasty alternative to traditional sweets. Another important point is to choose quality dark chocolates, which have few additional ingredients. Check labels to avoid chocolates that contain large amounts of sugar, hydrogenated fats, or other unnecessary additives. The ideal is a chocolate that contains cocoa, cocoa butter, and a minimum amount of sugar. Let's also address the issue of the benefits of dark chocolate for mental health. Consuming small amounts of dark chocolate can release endorphins and improve your mood. This effect, combined with the physical benefits, makes dark chocolate a great option for moments of relaxation and pleasure, without the guilt that comes with consuming less healthy sweets. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat chocolate is a huge lie. Choosing the right type of chocolate and consuming it in moderation are essential to enjoy the benefits without harming your health. Dark chocolate, with its high cocoa content and low sugar content, can be a delicious and healthy addition to the diet of those with diabetes. Lie number six. Diabetic people cannot eat EGGS. Eggs have been the subject of a lot of controversy over the years, especially when it comes to diabetic diets. Some say that eggs should be avoided due to their cholesterol and fat content. However, this is yet another lie that needs to be demystified. Let's understand why eggs can be a healthy and valuable part of the diet for people with diabetes. Firstly, eggs are an excellent source of high-quality protein. Proteins help stabilize blood sugar levels, promote satiety, and help build and repair body tissues. One large egg contains about 6 grams of protein and just 70 calories, making it a nutritious and low-cost option. In addition to protein, eggs contain a variety of essential nutrients, such as vitamins A, D, E, and B12, as well as minerals such as iron, zinc, and selenium. Vitamin D, for example, is crucial for bone health and the immune system, while B vitamins are important for energy and brain health. Now, let's address the common concern about cholesterol. It's true that eggs contain cholesterol, but recent studies show that moderate egg consumption is not directly linked to an increased risk of heart disease for most people. For diabetics, the most important thing is to monitor total consumption of saturated and trans fats, which have a greater impact on blood cholesterol levels than the dietary cholesterol found in eggs. When we talk about how to prepare eggs, it is essential to opt for healthy methods. Avoid frying them in excess oil or butter. Prefer to cook them, poach them, or prepare them by stirring them with a little olive oil or coconut oil. These methods keep eggs healthy and delicious. Let's think about some ways to incorporate eggs into your daily diet. Nutritious breakfast. An egg breakfast can be a great way to start the day. Try scrambled eggs with spinach and tomatoes, or an omelet filled with vegetables and a little low-fat cheese. This combination provides protein, fiber, and a variety of nutrients that help keep energy and glucose levels stable until the next meal. Healthy snacks. Hard-boiled eggs are great for snacks. They are easy to prepare in advance and can be transported easily. A boiled egg can be a quick and nutritious snack option, helping to keep hunger at bay without raising your blood sugar level. Hearty salads. Adding eggs to salads can transform a simple salad into a complete meal. Slice a hard-boiled egg and place on a green salad with cucumber, carrot, and avocado. This adds protein and texture to the salad, making it more satisfying. Quick meals. 
Eggs can be the base of many quick and healthy meals. Try an egg muffin made in cupcake liners with beaten eggs, chopped vegetables, and a little cheese. Bake in the oven and you'll have a meal that's easy to carry and eat anywhere. It is also important to highlight that eggs from free-range chickens fed a natural diet tend to be more nutritious. These eggs contain more omega-3s and vitamins, which may offer additional health benefits. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat eggs is a huge lie. Eggs are nutritious, versatile, and can be included in a healthy diabetes diet as long as they are prepared properly and consumed in moderation. Incorporating eggs into your meals can provide a good amount of protein and essential nutrients, helping to keep blood sugar levels under control. Lie number five, diabetic people cannot eat cheese. There is a common myth that diabetics should avoid cheese due to its fat and calorie content. However, this is a simplistic and incorrect view of the role of cheese in the diet of those with diabetes. Let's better understand why this belief is mistaken and how cheese can be included in a healthy way in your diet. First, it's important to recognize that not all cheeses are created equal. There are many varieties of cheese, each with different nutritional profiles. Hard cheeses like Parmesan and cheddar have a higher fat content while fresh cheeses like ricotta and cottage tend to be lower in fat and calories. This means that by choosing the right type of cheese and consuming it in moderation, you can enjoy its benefits without compromising your health. Cheese is an excellent source of protein, calcium, and other essential nutrients. Proteins are particularly important for diabetics because they help stabilize blood sugar levels and promote feelings of satiety. Additionally, calcium is vital for the health of bones and teeth. One of the best types of cheese to include in your diet is cottage cheese. It is low in fat and calories but high in protein. Cottage cheese can be added to a variety of dishes, such as salads, smoothies, and even desserts, providing a boost of protein without adding many calories or fat. Another excellent example is ricotta. This fresh cheese is light and versatile, and can be used in sweet and savory recipes. Ricotta is rich in protein and contains less fat than many hard cheeses. It can be mixed with fruit for a healthy snack or used as a base for whole grain pasta fillings. For those who like stronger flavors, feta cheese is a great option. Feta is a Greek cheese traditionally made from sheep's or goat's milk with a distinct, salty flavor. It's lower in calories and fat than many yellow cheeses and can be used in salads, omelets, and Mediterranean dishes. Just remember to moderate the amount due to its sodium content. If you prefer hard cheeses, Parmesan may be a good choice in small quantities. It is an aged cheese with an intense flavor, so a little is enough to add flavor to dishes. Grate a little Parmesan over salads, soups, or whole grain pasta for an extra touch of flavor without overdoing it. It is also important to pay attention to portions. Even healthier cheeses should be consumed in moderation. A typical serving of cheese is about 30 grams, or about the size of a matchbox. This amount is enough to obtain the nutritional benefits without ingesting excess calories or fat. Another helpful tip is to combine cheese with fiber-rich foods like vegetables and whole grains. This helps to balance the meal and control blood glucose levels. For example, you can add slices of fresh cheese to a leafy green salad with walnuts and olive oil, creating a balanced and tasty meal. Additionally, avoid processed cheeses, which often contain additives, preservatives, and high levels of sodium. Opt for natural cheeses and, if possible, choose organic varieties or those made with grass-fed milk, which tend to be more nutritious. The idea that diabetics can't eat cheese is a lie. With smart choices and moderate consumption, cheese can be a delicious and nutritious part of the diet. Enjoy the different varieties of cheese and explore healthy ways to incorporate them into your daily meals. Lie number four, diabetic people cannot eat rice. Rice is one of the most consumed foods in the world, present in different cultures and daily meals. However, there is a persistent myth that people with diabetes should avoid rice completely. Let's demystify this belief and understand how rice can be included in the diet of those with diabetes in a healthy way. Firstly, it is important to know the different types of rice available. White rice, which is the most common, has a high glycemic index, which means it can quickly raise blood sugar levels. However, this does not mean that all types of rice should be avoided. 
there are much friendlier options for those who need to control their glucose. Brown rice is an excellent alternative. It keeps the husk and bran, which are rich in fiber and nutrients, unlike refined white rice. Fiber helps slow the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, preventing blood glucose spikes. Additionally, brown rice provides a longer-lasting feeling of satiety, which can help with appetite and weight control. Another type of rice that can be included in the diet is basmati rice. This rice has a lower glycemic index compared to traditional white rice, which means it causes a more gradual rise in blood sugar levels. Wild rice and black rice are also good options, as they are rich in fiber and antioxidants. Now let's talk about how to prepare the rice. The way you cook rice can influence its glycemic response. Cooking rice with a larger amount of water and then draining it can reduce its glycemic index. Another tip is to let the rice cool before consuming it, similar to what we mentioned with potatoes. Cooling rice transforms some of the starches into resistant starches, which are digested more slowly by the body. When serving rice, combining it with other foods is essential. Pair rice with lean proteins like chicken, fish or tofu and a wide variety of vegetables. This not only makes the meal more balanced, but also helps control blood glucose. For example, a dish of brown rice with grilled chicken, broccoli and carrots can be a nutritious and satisfying meal. It is also important to control rice portions. A suitable serving for diabetics is usually half a cup of cooked rice, which is about the size of a scoop of ice cream. Learning how to measure portions correctly is essential for staying in control of your blood sugar levels. Another point to consider is the frequency with which rice is consumed. It is not necessary to eat rice every day. Vary your carbohydrate sources, including other whole grains like quinoa, barley, and oats, which are also rich in nutrients and have a smaller impact on blood glucose. Finally, the choice of side dishes is crucial. Avoid ready-made sauces and dressings that may contain excess sugar and sodium. Choose to season the rice with fresh herbs, spices, a drizzle of olive oil and lemon juice. These ingredients not only enhance the flavor but also add nutritional benefits to the meal. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat rice is a big lie. With the right choices and proper moderation, rice can be a healthy and delicious part of the diet for someone with diabetes. Choose healthier types of rice, control your portions, and combine with other nutritious foods to keep your blood sugar levels under control. Lie number three, diabetic people cannot eat bread. How many times have you heard that diabetics should avoid bread at all costs? This is one of the most persistent and frustrating lies. Bread, such a basic and traditional food, is often demonized when it comes to diabetes. However, the truth is that diabetics can include bread in their diet. The secret is to choose the right type of bread and consume it in moderation. White bread made with refined flour can actually cause a rapid rise in blood sugar. This is because it has a high glycemic index and is quickly digested and absorbed by the body. But there are much better alternatives that can be incorporated into the diet of those with diabetes without causing these glucose spikes. Whole grain breads are an excellent option. They're made with whole grains, which means they contain more fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Fiber, in particular, is essential because it helps slow the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, which results in a slower release of glucose into the blood. This helps keep sugar levels more stable. When choosing a whole grain bread, pay attention to the label. Make sure the first ingredient is wholemeal flour and avoid breads that contain lots of additives and added sugars. Some good options include whole wheat bread, rye bread, and multigrain bread. Another option is naturally fermented bread, also known as slow yeast bread. This type of bread is made with a longer fermentation process that breaks down some of the carbohydrates and proteins in wheat, making it easier to digest and having a lower impact on blood sugar levels. Additionally, the flavor is generally richer and the texture more interesting. What you put on the bread also makes a big difference. Instead of covering bread with sugary jams or chocolate spreads, opt for healthier options. Some ideas include avocado, which is rich in healthy fats and fiber, cottage cheese, which provides protein and is low in carbohydrates, or natural peanut butter, which adds protein and healthy fats. 
Adding a source of protein or healthy fat to your bread can help slow the digestion of carbohydrates even further, keeping your blood sugar stable. Let's also talk about portion control. Even whole grain or naturally fermented breads should be consumed in moderation. One or two slices per meal, depending on the size and nutritional content of the bread, are usually sufficient. Combine bread with other nutrient-dense foods to create a balanced meal. For example, a slice of whole grain bread with avocado and an egg can be a nutritious and satisfying breakfast. And if you like making your own bread, there are many recipes available that use whole grain flours and healthy ingredients. Making your own bread allows you to control exactly what you're putting into it, avoiding unnecessary preservatives and additives. Therefore, it is not necessary to banish bread from your diet if you have diabetes. The important thing is to make smart choices, opt for healthier breads and pay attention to portions. This way, you can continue to enjoy this basic and delicious food without compromising your health. Lie number two, diabetic people cannot eat pasta. The idea that diabetics can't eat pasta is one of the most painful lies for anyone who loves a good plate of pasta or lasagna. The good news is that this belief is not true. Diabetics can indeed enjoy their favorite pasta, as long as they make smart choices and eat in moderation. Let's demystify this lie and see how you can include pasta in your diet in a healthy way. Traditional pasta, made from refined wheat flour, can cause blood glucose spikes due to its high glycemic index. However, there are several alternatives that may be friendlier for those with diabetes. Whole grain pasta, for example, is an excellent option. They are made with wholemeal flour, which contains more fiber and nutrients than refined flour. Fiber helps slow the digestion and absorption of carbohydrates, keeping blood sugar levels more stable. Another alternative is pasta made from whole grains such as quinoa, brown rice, and buckwheat. Not only do these options have a lower glycemic index, they also offer a variety of flavors and textures that can make your meals more interesting. Additionally, you can find pasta made from legumes, such as lentils and chickpeas, which are rich in protein and fiber. Let's talk about how to prepare the dough. The preparation method can also influence the impact on blood glucose levels. Cooking the pasta al dente, that is, leaving it a little firm, makes the body digest it more slowly, which helps avoid sugar spikes. Another tip is to always combine pasta with a good amount of vegetables and a source of protein. This creates a more balanced dish and helps control the glycemic response. For example, instead of a plate of spaghetti with just tomato sauce, add vegetables like broccoli, peppers, and spinach, and include a protein like grilled chicken, shrimp, or tofu. These additions not only increase the nutritional value of the meal, but also help stabilize blood sugar levels. Portion size is another crucial factor. Often, the amount of pasta we consume in a meal is much more than necessary. A suitable serving of cooked pasta is about a cup, which is roughly the size of a closed fist. Learning to control portions can make a big difference in managing diabetes. You can also try different sauces for your pasta. Tomato-based sauces are generally a good choice as long as they are homemade or low in sugar. Avoid creamy sauces that are high in fat and calories. A good homemade tomato sauce, seasoned with garlic, onion, basil, and a drizzle of olive oil, can be both delicious and healthy. Now, imagine making a lasagna with wholemeal pasta, layers of grilled vegetables like zucchini, eggplant and spinach, and a homemade tomato sauce. Add some low-fat cheese and ground chicken or turkey to complete the dish. This is a balanced and nutritious meal that you can enjoy without guilt. Another important point is how often you consume pasta. It's okay to include pasta in your diet, but it should be part of a varied diet. Experiment with different types of grains and carbohydrate sources throughout the week to ensure you're getting a wide range of nutrients. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat pasta is a lie. With the right choices and portion control, you can continue to enjoy your favorite dishes without compromising your health. Take advantage of whole grain pasta and combine it with other nutritious foods to create delicious, balanced meals. Your recipe book is waiting for you in the first comment of this video. Click now and get yours, it's running out. Lie number one. Diabetic people cannot eat potatoes. The potato is a staple in many cultures and diets around the world. However, many people believe that if you have diabetes, you should avoid potatoes at all costs. This is yet another lie that deserves to be uncovered. 
Diabetics can include potatoes in their diet, as long as they make smart choices and prepare the food properly. First, it's important to understand that there are different types of potatoes, each with unique characteristics. Sweet potatoes, for example, are an excellent alternative to traditional white potatoes. It has a lower glycemic index, which means its sugar is released more slowly into the blood, helping to avoid glucose spikes. Additionally, sweet potatoes are rich in fiber, vitamins, and antioxidants, making them a nutritious and tasty option. For those who prefer white potatoes, there are ways to consume them without compromising their health. A tip is to always let the potato cool after cooking and before consuming it. When potatoes cool, part of their starches turn into resistant starches, which are digested more slowly by the body, helping to control blood sugar levels. Therefore, potato salad or potatoes prepared in advance and cooled can be a good option. The preparation method also makes all the difference. French fries and chips, although delicious, are high in trans fats and calories, as well as having a negative impact on blood sugar. Instead, opt for baked, boiled, or grilled potatoes. For example, you can cut sweet potatoes into sticks, season them with a little olive oil and herbs, and roast them in the oven. This creates a healthy and delicious alternative to traditional fries. Additionally, combining potatoes with other nutrient sources can help balance the meal. Try to include protein and fiber in the same meal to reduce the glycemic impact. For example, a good option is to serve a portion of baked potatoes with a green leaf salad and a lean protein, such as grilled fish or chicken breast. This not only makes the meal more complete, but also helps keep your blood sugar level stable. It is also important to control portions. Potatoes, even the healthiest ones, should be consumed in moderation. A suitable portion is about half a large potato or a small potato, which is about the size of a closed fist. Learning to measure portions and combine potatoes with other nutritious foods is essential to maintain a balanced diet. If you like variety, consider trying different types of tubers such as yams and cassava, which can also be included in your diet in a healthy way. These foods offer a variety of nutrients and can be prepared in many creative ways. Therefore, the idea that diabetics cannot eat potatoes is a huge lie. The secret is choosing the right type of potato, preparing it in a healthy way and controlling portions. Potatoes can be a delicious and nutritious part of a balanced diabetic diet. If you are afraid of including potatoes in your diet, try making the changes mentioned and see how your body reacts. It is possible to enjoy this basic food without compromising your health, as long as choices are made in a conscious and balanced way. Now that we've uncovered the biggest lies about eating for diabetics, I want to leave you with an unmissable tip. I'm leaving an incredible video on your screen about the six drinks that every diabetic should drink as soon as they wake up. These drinks not only help control your blood sugar from an early age, but they can also bring numerous benefits to your health throughout the day. If you don't click to watch, you'll miss out on valuable information that can transform your morning routine and improve your well-being. Don't miss this opportunity to learn something new and simple that can make all the difference in your diabetes control. Click now and watch. I'll see you there.